It's a sad day, everybody. Our very last video. <sighs> what is up, everybody? Mr. Purse here. Welcome to our very last and final video. It is Unit 6. It is the modern era. It is Part 5. It is science and the environment. This is 1900 to present. This is the last video I think you'll have to watch of me. So why don't we get into this? We can get it done with and you can be finished and we can start reviewing for the AP exam. So away we go. A lot of this stuff is probably common sense in some ways. A lot of this stuff you've probably learned before. But for the sake of kind of piecing it all together for the AP exam, um, here is this is kind of the modern stuff, the advances. So number one is the scientific advances. So scientific advances during this time period of 1900 to present are going to spread across the globe. And we've seen kind of this modern technological age, especially in the latter half or the end of the 20th century into the 21st century. So a couple of things, obviously, just these things, these communication devices and transportation, they're really going to reduce geographic barriers. So in the previous time period of 1750 to 1900, where there was a lot of limitations of communication, um, we do see some expansion like the steamship and the telegraph line. In this time period of 1900 to present, we really see the shrinking of geographic barriers. So cell phones, fax machines, internet, um, email, air the air technology of airplanes um and this right here is just this is the uh usage of internet uh and this this kind of wave that you see here is nighttime daytime um and you can kind of see how much where in the world people are actually have access to the internet or using the internet uh, mainly industrialized countries but you see um, other countries as well getting uh or countries that are attempting to industrialize with more internet access so this is going to really reduce good for business um, good for just communication of news and word travels a lot faster, especially with social media, things happening around the globe. Also, um, there's going to be this thing called the Green Revolution. And in the 60s and 70s, uh, scientists developed better ways to produce food. So better chemicals to resist um, bad weather, um, to resist uh, insects and things that destroy crops. So we have, we were going to be able to genetically enhance food to produce more food. So in the past when crops would have died and we would have seen famine, now because of these scientific advances, we have um, better food production. This is really going to lead to more food. And one of the themes from the very beginning, if you go back to the first video you'll see this and this is one of the last themes as well is that more food equals more people more food more people more people more problems so what you're going to see is as a result of this increase in agriculture we're going to see a population explosion in the 60s and 70s especially in the developing world and developing world would be places like china india pakistan iran vietnam korea so a lot of these places are going to see this increase in population because there's more food less famine more people, more food. Um, so that's called the green revolution. Easy to remember because green generally refers to the earth. Um, and in this case, we're producing more food. We'll talk more about that population increase in class. Also, we have new medical advances are going to allow humans to live longer. We have antibiotics. So things that fight off infection, which we didn't see before um, 1900s. So in the 1900s, with the invention of antibiotics and these antibodies are going to be um, able to be taken and to fight off infection. So reasons why people would have died in the past um, are now easily stopped with antibiotics. Also, one of the a vaccine is invented in 1955. Many vaccines are invented in the 1900s, but one vaccine is the polio vaccine. Um, polio was a disease that really was spread throughout the United States, around the world prior to 1955. And uh, Jonas Salk, who is a, was a scientist, invented the vaccine in 1955. Um, polio, which uh, Franklin Roosevelt was inflicted with, essentially... Um, causes a shutdown of some organs and people had trouble um oftentimes it called caused paralysis and this it spread very easily and because of the vaccine it's been pretty much eradicated in the united states so after you can see this chart here this is um when it was the polio vaccine was invented in 1955 and you can see these are the number of cases in the united states and how quickly it just drops off as a result of the vaccine so people are no longer inflicted with this disease which we see a lot of as a result of vaccines. Also, we have new energy technologies. So as a result of petroleum, and petroleum is just refers to kind of oil and gas, um, as well as nuclear power. So we're taking, we're harnessing this nuclear energy that was also used to create atomic weapons and nuclear weapons. And now we're harnessing it for energy to power things. This is going to increase uh, production and productivity because of these 
these new te energy technologies, we can produce more in factories, we can make more things, um, and we can light lights and internet and computers and all that stuff as a result of this, which increases um, technology. This is the major oil producers around the world. Um, and this is where all the nuclear power sites are around the world. So these are this is nuclear power that's being harnessed for energy for people you'll see mostly in Western Europe and the United States, as well as Japan, um, so mainly industrialized countries, but it provides an alternative source of power as opposed to um, natural gas and oil. Also, um, humans are going to change their relationship to the environment. This is probably the one that's a little obvious, but just a couple things. Uh, there's issues today over competition for resources, um, more so than we saw in the past time period. It's things like clean water, um, clean air. This is Beijing uh, as a result of no solid pollution standards. This is the smog rolling in. This looks like fog, but it's smog. It's the pollutants that roll in every day. Um, we also have issues over water scarcity. So the areas that are in blue here are areas that are predicted to have some serious water issues, which could cause war, which we need solutions for, um, but also out here on the West Coast. Also, we see uh, deforestation, the cutting down of forests. That's this up here, the darker the color in terms of red, the more deforestation we're seeing. So red and orange. Um, also, uh, desertification, which is the creation of man-made deserts as a result of cutting down trees and overgrazing of animals. You can see that up here, same kind of, a lot of the same areas that are um, man-made deserts being created. So humans changing their relation to their environment. We also have the release of greenhouse gases, so the release of pollutants. Um, there's really debate on climate change, and I don't want to get too much into it on here, but um, kind of two sides of it. This is the side that's pro, that believes that climate change is man-made. This is from 1880 to 2000, um, really at the peak of the Industrial Revolution here and using of coal to power the factories. You can see the global temperature has increased based on this. So from 1880 to pretty much 2010, um, the, the global temperature based on meteorolo meteorolo meteorological, blah, 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 try that again, um, on these weather stations are increasing by about a, a, a degree and a half, which isn't something that you're going to feel over uh, like over the course of a season or two, but it is going to have an impact globally on uh, water levels and um, the way uh, drinking water. Um, it's going to have an impact on the polar ice caps. This is the pro side. Uh, the people who believe that it is not man-made, look at this chart. This is this goes back to um, zero, so all the way back to the Roman Empire, essentially. And this is the global changes in temperature. And if you look, this is the chart that I just showed you over here. This is where that chart is. And if you look at it, some climate scientists believe that it's really just this natural progression of temperatures going up and down. Here's our little ice age in the 16 and 1700s. And then we're seeing this kind of ebb and flow of um, temperatures. And it's just a natural progression. Other think that it's man-made. Not going to get into it in here, but that's the, uh, there's that for you. Also, disease and scientific in, disease and scientific innovations. Who? And conflict led to demographic changes. Demographic is population. So some diseases associated with poverty are going to persist. We're going to see tuberculosis, which is pretty much eradicated as well in the United States, is going to ins uh, continue to exist in areas that are lower income and poverty. So the areas in dark blue, we still see tuberculosis, which is a lung disease, which is highly contagious which uh, most of you have been or will be tested for to make sure you don't have it. We pretty much eradicated it in the United States. Um, we also see malaria as an issue. Anything in red have, have issues with malaria, which um, can make people very sick, mainly spread through mosquitoes. Um, anything in red and the light blue is also, we do see some of it, but it's eliminated. We pretty much have eliminated it in the United States. So diseases associated with poverty, the poor countries see tuberculosis, malaria. Some new diseases emerge. We have HIV and AIDS. Um, this is the percentage of population. So almost about four and a half percent of people between 15 and 49 do have HIV in uh, sub-Saharan Africa. So it's a big problem there. In the Americas, it's uh, about 0.5 percent, so much less, but still significant. This disease did not exist in the world before the late 70s, early 80s. So a new disease kind of emerges that um, is a threat to survival. Also, we have changing life because people are living longer because of these antibiotics and science and all these new technologies. We see some new diseases emerge, um, new things that really didn't exist when people were dying at the age of 30. Um, diabetes is one. So if you think we're safe in the United States, we are not. We have a high rate of diabetes, um, which is uh, there's a couple different types of diabetes, but this is uh, where the issue is of that. We also have heart disease. So we are one of the 
areas in the world that have the highest uh, heart disease rate. So a lot of this comes with unhealthy eating, not enough exercise, and just living longer where you can't be as physically active as you used to be. Um, and kind of the last thing I want to point out is also in this time period, we see more effective forms of birth control. In the previous time period, birth control was almost non-existent. Um, it was illegal in many countries. It was believed to violate um, biblical principles. So it was hard to have access to birth control. As the 1900s progress, women are going to have more access to birth control, different types of birth control, which really allows women to have control over their own fertility and sexual practices. Meaning that if you are a working woman, whether you're married or single or whatever, and you're engaging, engaging in sexual activities, um, this allows, birth control allows you to control that. So if you want to continue working um, and you're married, you can uh, and you don't want to have kids, you can control that where before you couldn't. Um, this is the world bo wor world birth control use. The, the areas in blue, about 65% or more of people who are engaging in sexual practices are using birth control in these countries. Um, and then the areas that are in yellow are less than 25%. Some areas can't afford birth control, unlike the United States. So poor countries are going to have more um, less birth control use because the people are living in poverty and just can't afford birth control. So, and that's what you see over here. These are where the higher the birth rates over here um, as a result of less birth control. So women are having more children because they don't have access to birth control. That is what I have. That's what you got. That's the wrap up. Um, as always, any questions, let me know. Tear, tear, last one. Tears coming down my cheek. I don't know what I'm going to do. So sad. So sad.